Welcome to Trinity's Wednesday noon service. So glad you could join us. The bulletin is in. Go to umtrinity.org slash bulletins to get the bulletin for this service. The call to worship. God of majesty and power, how awesome you are to us. The mountains tremble, the seas roar at the sound of your name. Yet, you have chosen to come, to come to us in love and tenderness. You have called us to be people who will act in ways of peace and justice in your world. Open our hearts and our spirits, Lord, to hear your word, and having heard, to act in ministries of hope and peace for all your earth. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Trinity, I know that in the last few weeks we've had a number of challenges to our prayer ministry and I invite you today to join with me in prayer and think about the ways in which this time of being set apart has given us an opportunity to renew our relationship with God. And this morning, or this afternoon rather, I want to have a prayer for us that sort of attempts at the healing of our nation itself. Would you fold your hands and bow your heads with me? Let us pray. By your power, eternal God, our Lord Jesus healed the sick. He gave new hope to the hopelessness of people. And though we can't command or possess your power, we pray for those who want to be healed, especially from infection of COVID-19. But also there's a way in which this particular disease and the way we have addressed it is showing the deep divisions that are within our country. Today I pray that you close our wounds and you cure our sickness. Make us as a broken people whole again, so that we may live to rejoice in your love. Help us work, welcome every healing as a sign that though death is always against us, you're for us, and you've promised renewed and risen life in Jesus who is Christ and Lord, and in whose name we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's so great to have you in worship with us this Wednesday. We hope you will also be joining us on Sunday mornings at 1030. You can find us on Facebook and on our YouTube channel. We hope that you'll join us for those.
You know, we have other ways that we're reaching out to you every single day. Jim has devotions that he emails out. We also have videos, devotion videos that we send out every day, some meditation time for you just to add a little to your day and to remind you that Trinity is with you even during this time of struggle. There are other ways that we're reaching out to you too. Jim has a brand new Bible study and we'd love for you to be a part. It's on uh, Sunday mornings, on Monday mornings, and on Wednesday evenings. You can look at our um, Facebook and uh, also our page on Facebook as well that tells you the different ways that you can reach to him or if you uh, prefer you can email the office and find out how you can be part of his Bible study. In knowing that this is a time of struggle, it would be great to connect with you in prayer. So also, we'll be having different prayer times. I invite you to join me and Jim and Keith as we offer up these prayers for you and whatever is going on in your life. If you'll reach out to the church office as well um, at info at umtrinity.org, let us know what time is best for you and we can, uh, we can figure out which one of the prayer times we can most connect with you. Thank you for being part of Trinity Church. You're an important part of our life and in our prayers. I'd like to read to you from the Gospel of Matthew. There's considerable suffering and agony that's from coast to coast. And I'd like to sort of revisit through this scripture uh, Jesus' last moments, that we may draw hope from what was said about those final hours of his. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness covered the entire land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And when some of those standing nearby heard him say this, they said, he's calling on Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge and he filled it with sour wine, he put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. But someone else said, leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to rescue him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. And at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. From top to bottom, the earth shook, rocks split, tombs broke open, and bodies of many holy people who had died were immediately raised to life. They came out of the tombs, and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Trinity, don't get me wrong, I don't really want to sound morbid today, but sometimes over the years I've liked strolling through cemeteries and reading the tombstones. I mean, in Virginia and Massachusetts, they're both commonwealths so old that tombstones in Williamsburg and in the Danvers, Salem area, they can make for interesting reading. Both contain cemeteries from the early 1600s. And in both these locations, the headstones can be so weathered by time, the, le the lettering is eroded, and you can hardly read what's on them. This adds even to our sense of finitude. Even our monuments fade over time, no longer speaking of who people once were, or even that we were. Now, if you want to have some fun, well, I mean, an idea of fun, Visit Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond sometime. Get a box lunch from Sally Bell's and take yourself on a self-guided tour. This cemetery is filled with the resting places of many of history's notables. There are two U.S. presidents there, James Monroe and John Tyler. 
There are 25 Confederate generals there, including Jeb Stuart, George Pickett, many other notables, that include John Randolph, Douglas Self Hall Freedom, Freeman, and also Chief Justice Lewis Powell. One day, I'll take up residence in Hollywood Cemetery, but not yet. When I served a Methodist church in the Midlands in England, I got to see many churches that surrounded themselves with reminders of our human transience. I mean, these churchyards were filled with tombstones right up to the very walls of the church themselves. And often, you approach the door to the church by walking along the winding path through the world of the dead. This is the season of Easter. It's a time in the Christian year when we reflect on the resurrection's victory over our own mortality and on the life of this Jesus who is Christ. It isn't morbid to reflect on death from time to time, especially when you and I have a, such a strong sense of hope in an afterlife. You know, John Donne, a 16th century dean of St. Paul's Cathedral in London, he went so far as to have his coffin made when he was still a young man. I think about 26 years old. I'm told he lay in that coffin a few minutes every week just to keep a healthy perspective on life. All right, I'm not going to do that. But even more than I can imagine, that's even more than I could possibly see myself ever doing. And yet, it's a good thing to mentally walk among the headstones. And like good old Ebenezer Scrooge, see our own mortality among the many, life's great equalizer. Such a practice restores us to right thinking about our values, our priorities in this life, because we're all just passing through. And it may also deepen our appreciation for God's gift of life to each of us and our love of life, each other and God. Carpe diem, my friends, Seize the day. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Quite a message. Go with love, faith, and mercy, knowing that all the paths of the Lord are steadfast love, faithfulness, and life. Amen. Amen.